Chapter 1. The Mining Life Cycle The mining life cycle summarizes the different phases a mine goes through from beginning to end of life. It can be broken up into the following stages. Stage 1. Mineral Exploration Stage 2. Project Evaluation and Fundraising Stage 3. Construction Stage 4. Steady State Production and stage five, closure and rehabilitation. The various stakeholders involved, namely labor, equity providers, debt providers, government, and local communities, would have different objectives at each stage of the life cycle. We will look at these objectives in detail as the course progresses. Let's begin with stage one, mineral exploration. Here, sponsors identified a potentially lucrative ore body, but still need to drill and explore the ore body further in order to better understand it. This stage would culminate in a pre-feasibility study, combining results of drilling and exploration with a preliminary financial assessment of the project to determine its profitability. Once sponsors are satisfied that the ore body could be profitably exploited, they would typically list the mining project on an exchange in order to raise equity. Typical funders at this stage are equity providers, either the original sponsors or the shareholders investing on the exchange. Stage 2. Project Evaluation and Fundraising After raising additional equity in Stage 1, sponsors would now put together a definitive feasibility study or DFS. The DFS would build on the information in the pre-feasibility study and would entail additional drilling and sampling, more detailed mine planning and design, and additional financial modeling. The DFS would provide management with increased confidence on the ore body and would allow them to declare mineral reserves. Once the reserves and the DFS were completed, the sponsors would now approach debt funders in order to raise enough capital to construct the mine. Typically, debt funders would only invest in mining projects at this stage or at more advanced stages, relying on the detailed information contained in the DFS. Stage 3. Construction this stage deals with a whole host of activities required in order to bring the mine into production, starting with the ordering of long lead time items, pre-stripping, plant construction, putting in place necessary logistical facilities such as roads, training staff, and finally commissioning the mine and ramping up production to steady state levels. Sponsors would use the debt and equity funding they received in Stage 2 to construct the mine and ramp up to steady-state production. Stage 4. Steady-state production. During this stage, the mine is up and running and producing at full capacity. Sponsors at this stage would typically refinance project finance debt that was previously put in place. Project financing facilities usually carry high rates of interest to compensate lenders for the inherent risk of constructing a new project. Now that the project would be up and running, it would be significantly de-risked. And for this reason, a mining company would want to refinance its project finance debt into new, cheaper corporate facilities to reflect the lower risk of the mine. Typical funders who would take part in such a refinancing would be commercial banks. Sponsors would now seek to remove development finance institutions or other expensive funders and optimize their capital structures, taking cost and service offerings of various lenders into account. During this stage, sponsors are investing in replacement capital expenditure to renew equipment and fleet. Sponsors may also wish to optimize the mine and expand its footprint further, if profitable to do so. The payment of dividends to shareholders would also be an important priority of sponsors at this stage. 
Stage 5. Closure and Rehabilitation As the mine reaches its end of life, sponsors begin to implement closure and rehabilitation plans. This involves the orderly cessation of operations and the rehabilitation of the mining footprint in order to restore the land to its previous state before mining operations took place. During their lives, mining companies would be required to put aside sums of money periodically to prepare for their eventual closure and rehabilitation stage. Banks would have previously provided financial guarantees covering the rehabilitation costs of the mine. This stage also involves careful negotiations with other stakeholders such as labour and trade unions to ensure that where possible, the impact on staff redundancies is minimised. If possible, workers would be redeployed to other ongoing operations of the sponsor once the mine was closed.